Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Hackintosh video. Now there are a ton of people doing beautiful Hackintosh builds. Quinn over at Snazzy Labs has done some really nice ones. Dave2D just did a beautiful, beautiful build. And this video is gonna be nothing like those because this one looks like sh all right, so just a little bit of history on this and why I'm calling it a Frankintosh. I had an HP Elite Desk 800 G1 small form factor machine. Now these Hackintosh really well. It's really easy to do it, but it's such a small form factor that you couldn't fit any cards or anything in there very easily. Then I had an old HP 8200 tower and that thing was kind of outdated the internals and that i didn't really want to use it for anything but i noticed some of the pin connectors were the same so i went online kind of got the schematics for both of them and sure enough the elite desk 800 g1 motherboard would work in the 8200 so that's what i did now i probably could have done a much better job on this but i didn't i just hacked the crap out of it so the ports were visible and i could get to everything put the motherboard in there hooked it up and it powered on. So there's my Frankintosh, ugly but functional. All right, so when I got this Elite Desk, it had an i7-4770 processor, eight gigs of RAM, and just a physical spinning drive, no external graphics card, just the onboard GPU. So I wanted to change some of those out. Once I got it in this new case, I added another eight gigs of RAM to bring that up to 16, swapped out the physical drive for a SSD, and added a Radeon RX 560 because I knew these 560s, even though they're not listed as officially compatible with Mojave, they are officially compatible with Mojave with no extra work out of the box to get them working. Now, once I got all the components in there, I installed Mac OS Mojave on that drive. Now I'm working on a tutorial video of this. I'll have this on my next tutorial Tuesday. I'll put a link up here if it's out already. So you can check that out if you want the specifics on how I installed things on here. But once I got Mojave on there, fired it up and started using it and it was working great for day-to-day -day activities, very, very fast and fluid, no problems at all. So I wanted to run some benchmarking on there. So the first benchmarking I wanted to do was Geekbench and I was actually pretty happy with the scores that i7-4770 gave me. For the single core score, I got a score of 4,494 and multi-core score was 15,336. Now this is a pretty decent score and it's a little bit better than the 2018 Mac Mini and it's a little bit better than the 2017 iMac 21.5 inch. So it kind of gives you an idea of where it falls in that ballpark and it's a very, very capable machine. Next up was Cinebench and Cinebench gave me an OpenGL score of 99.44 frames per second with that RX 560. So that is working great. And the CPU score was 703 CB, which is a pretty decent score as well. Again, keep in mind, these are just synthetic benchmarks. These aren't necessarily uh, be all end all to how this machine's gonna perform. The next benchmark I did was Unigen Heaven had everything set to medium for that benchmark. Again, that's pretty decent with that RX 560. I had to do no other work to get that working. It just worked out of the box. As far as gaming, gaming actually worked pretty decently on this. This is actually the first uh, low-end Hackintosh that I've done that provided decent gaming. Now I tried Fortnite, but Fortnite has this bug where it just gets stuck at the loading screen. And if you wait long enough, like 10 minutes, literally, I'm not even joking, it gets past that loading screen, but I didn't want to do that for this video. So I just passed on Fortnite. What I did do was Shadow of Mordor. That was the first one I tried out and with everything everything set to high I was getting right around 40 frames per second which is completely playable in my opinion everything was smooth worked really well I didn't see any major lag spikes or anything like that the same thing goes with the next game I tried which is Subnautica and again I had everything set on high got right around that 40 frames per second again it was a really really great experience so for the average gamer I would say this is a decent option of course on this same hardware you could load Windows 10 and you would get much better performance in games but if you're using solely Mac OS this is actually a pretty decent option it works really well on to some media production stuff I tried blender blender worked great I had no slowdowns everything was really smooth in this and then I tried some video editing I tried DaVinci Resolve first uh, and it worked great I didn't have to transcode the media I was working with 4k video right off my Lumix G7 loaded on the timeline the scrubbing was smooth playback was smooth I was able to add transitions effects overlay text do motion tracking, all kinds of stuff, and it worked beautifully. And this is with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So I would definitely recommend checking that one out. The next one, of course, I tried Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro was beautiful. That worked extremely well. 
as well. I mean, Final Cut Pro works well on even much older machines than this. It worked great in the editing and the same thing, transitions, layering tracks, all that stuff. Didn't slow it down, it worked great. I went to do the export and I used the Bruce X benchmark to do the exporting and it exported in one minute, 14 seconds. That was an average. I did it a few different times and kind of took that average. Honestly, that's a little bit higher than I was expecting on this machine, but it's still not too bad. But if anybody knows how I can uh, tweak it a little bit to bring that down, please let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to try that out and maybe do another video on that tweak. So all in all, this Frankintosh, as ugly as it looks, works great. It's actually one of the best budget Hackintoshes that I've built as far as performance and usability. Uh, I could do just about everything I want to do with it, and it works really, really well. I never had it crash or anything like that. So if you have one of these machines, it's a great option for Hackintoshing. Now, my normal disclaimer on Hackintoshing, I would not recommend a Hackintosh for a primary machine, a production machine, or anything that you need high reliability on. They could release a patch at any time to disable your Hackintosh and then you are SOL. What I would recommend it for is the hobbyist or somebody that wants to learn Mac OS, something along those lines that you are not gonna be using as your primary machine and maybe you wanna try things out in Mac OS once in a while. Uh, I would recommend it for that, but not for a production machine. If you want something for production with Mac OS, go out and buy a Mac. Even a used one is gonna do you right. Hopefully you found this useful and informative. Please hit that thumbs up if you did. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.